So I won't talk to you so much about how you're going to hold on to your seat. I'd like to talk to you about something else. Let's assume, and I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, let's assume that maybe the Democrats actually do recapture the House. A lot of people think that that is entirely possible. What are you going to do with it if you get it? Well, I think what we've said is that we're going to fight for the people. Uh, we have an agenda that is focused on lowering health care costs. We want to strengthen the Affordable Care Act. We want to protect people with pre-existing conditions, more than 100 million Americans throughout this country. Uh, we want to dramatically lower the high cost of prescription drugs, possibly by giving the federal government through Medicare the ability to use its bulk price purchasing power to negotiate lower prescription drug rates for the American people. That's the reasonable thing to do. We're also going to work hard on increasing pay for everyday Americans. We know we don't have an unemployment challenge right now in this country, but we have an underemployment problem. We have a wage stagnation problem. Far too many Americans are working harder, but falling further and further behind. We want to reverse that through a meaningful infrastructure plan. And then lastly, uh, we want to clean up corruption in Washington, D.C. Okay, so you, you might well be able, through negotiation, bulk negotiation, get the, some of the drug prices down without costing the government money. Infrastructure plan, going to cost the government money. Do substantial improvements on Affordable Care Act, going to cost money. How can you do that consistent with what we just heard about in terms of the deficit? Because the deficit is a real issue. Well, that's part of the challenge uh, here that Republicans passed a tax cut where 83 percent of the benefits go to the wealthiest one percent in America, not to working families and middle class folks. And then as a result of what was done, have saddled us with up to two trillion dollars in additional debt. So we should evaluate how do we rebalance our priorities to do things like infrastructure, which, by the way, there's a lot of bipartisan support for that. Right. The Chamber of Commerce, traditionally Republican-leaning, has said we have to do something to fix our crumbling bridges, roads, and tunnels. Completely right. But when you say rebalance, there are only two ways to do that. And that's either to uh, reduce the taxes on, the, on the, the, the poorer people or to actually increase taxes on the richer people, the people that you think got a disproportionate share. Are you in favor of undoing that, particularly with respect to corporations as well as individuals? Well, one, I think it's problematic where you had corporate tax cuts that were made permanent, individual tax cuts that are temporary, uh, that you had corporations that were allowed to maintain the SALT deduction in full, and that you had the SALT deduction dramatically eviscerated uh, for individuals. So when you talk about rebalancing, I think that every reasonable American can look at what was done and say, that was not fair for the overwhelming majority of the American people. In terms of specifics, uh, that will be subject to fine print discussion moving forward post-November. Uh, but I think from a framework standpoint, there is reason to evaluate, particularly here in New York, where so many people will be hit by the SALT issue. Subject to a lot of negotiation, a lot of detail, subject also to who's going to be leading the Democrats. Again, let's assume for the moment that they take the House. Uh, do you have the leadership in place that you need and want? And by the way, you're going to have to replace one of those leaders anyway because he lost in the primary here in New York. Well, I think there will be generational change. Joe Crowley is going to be very tough uh, to replace, but that does open up an opportunity uh, for the House Democratic Caucus chair position. Uh, as well as potentially the vice chair position. I support the leadership of Nancy Pelosi. If we're back in the majority, that will mean that she will have brought us to the promised land not once but twice. Uh, we do need to create additional opportunities for the entirety of the House Democratic Caucus to be on the playing field, display its talent and ability, and I look forward to helping in that regard. Well, and that's the question, really, because you don't want turmoil at the top. At the same time, there has to come a time when new blood comes in. Any healthy organization has that. And let's be, cl let's be clear, Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer have been there a good long time now. I mean, how do you bring in new, fresh blood and groom them up to be the next leaders? And by the way, are you one of those leaders? Well, you know, I'm proud to represent the 8th Congressional District of the United States Congress and also work with David Cicilline from Rhode Island and Sherry Bustos from Illinois as one of the three co-chairs of the House Democratic Policy and Communications Committee, which is a part of leadership. And so there has been a transition that has begun. Uh, but I've said also that the last thing we should do as Democrats right now is to engage in a family feud uh, and a circular firing squad before we're successful, hopefully, on November 6th. We can work those things out afterward. Right now, we have a mission, and that's to take back control of the House of Representatives. Okay, Congressman, thank you so very much.